Hi, thanks for watching this Axeman video tutorial on Sony Vegas. Today we're going to be taking a look at the preferences, and they will be found in the options right down here at the bottom in preferences. And that will bring up uh, this window with uh, quite a few tabs up at the top. Now, most of these tabs, uh, their default settings, are what you're going to want to go with. And a lot of them you're only going to look at if you have some uh, third party effects that you have installed or want to install. Uh, like you see, I have some isotope effects here. Um, likewise with MIDI, uh, if you have external keyboards or um, uh, audio device, uh, external sound boards or things like that, a lot of that is pretty advanced for your average uh, editing setup. But in this video, all we're really going to be looking at is the general video and editing preferences. So under the general tab, what you're going to find in here are really just some customizable functionality that you can choose to set up in a way that is beneficial to you. I recommend just scrolling through the list and checking or unchecking things that might or might not work for you. Under the video tab, again, most of this is going to stay at a default user setting. However, every computer, every machine is different. So if you notice your computer struggling under the default settings, a couple things you might want to manipulate would be the Dynamic RAM Preview Max. You can raise or lower that depending on your computer's uh, specs. Also, if you continue to have performance issues, a good idea might be to toggle your GPU acceleration settings. Um, a lot of times it's off. You can choose uh, some of your video cards and uh, processing uh, power. Uh, you might have some different options there. Under editing, uh, I'm going to talk about these first two, uh, enabling loop and pitch. And then we will also get into this one down here, the new still image length. So enabling looping on events by default. Okay, so an event is something specific. So we'll uncheck that so I can show you what we've got going on. Events are things that are, uh, let's see here, like this text right here is an event. So we'll drag that onto our timeline. And as we play it, you'll see it start to kind of quake across the, uh, the lettering there. Um, with this event, with our looping preference unchecked, when we take this out and drag the length longer if we want it long, it will it will go as long as we want without looping. This right here, this little notch in the top and at the bottom here uh, symbolizes a loop. Um, and obviously it, it's not checked now, so we're not seeing anything. Our animation is in the beginning, and then once we cross our looping area, it's not there anymore. But if we go into our preferences and turn that looping back on, we'll bring the uh, same effect down. You'll see when I loop, it creates another one right over. So the effect of the shaking in this event is now looped. There it goes again. So it's a looping on the time, it will loop on the timeline. And a lot of times that's, um, if you're wondering why something's not looping or why it keeps looping or something like that, you can switch that up just by uh, enabling or disabling the looping feature. Now let's take a look at preserving the pitch. Uh, we'll uncheck it now. And when I put an audio uh, track on the timeline. I'll play this so you can hear what the pitch is and how it should sound as is. Okay, so now holding control, if I don't hold control and I do that, it'll just loop as we looked at before. Um, but if I hold control and it, this will now drag it out. So I do not have my preserving pitch on there. And now that I've stretched it out a little bit, you'll see that the pitch has now been elongated. Uh, it's going to have a little bit lower of a pitch because I've made it longer. So in order to um, fix that pitch and have the preserving pitch, this is where we would go in our editing tab and make sure that our preserve pitch uh, option is on. So we'll hit apply and now we'll bring it on and we'll see. When I stretch it, it should have that same pitch. 
but a little bit slower tempo. Now you don't want to go too far with this because it's still going to sound a, bit, uh, a little bit bit crushed because it's stretching too much. Uh, as you'll see, with this one's probably too far. Yeah, that's a little bit too degraded. Finally, let's take a look at the new image length. This is a very useful tool when you're editing with a lot of music. Right now I have it set at two seconds, so when I put a still image onto my timeline, it'll show up there for two seconds. Um, so let's say that I want my images to match. See, these are two second clips. Let me go closer so you can see. Uh, right here, it's uh, zero to two seconds. These clips are zero to two seconds each of these that I put in. Uh, but I want them to match up with my with my audio. Right there, it was a good good uh, on beat. Um, so what I can do is just find the, what this one is. And it looks like it looks like it's 3.10 frames. So what I can do is go to my preferences, editing, and I can change this to three point whatever is going to give me 100 frames exactly, because three seconds is 90 frames. And you can just do the math to figure out exactly uh, where you want it to line up. Now you'll notice when I put the next image in, it will be exactly the same length as where I had this one set. So that should line up real nice with my audio. So that's a useful trick when editing to, to an audio track or when you know you have a certain time length for each image. You can just set how long it is right when you put it all down. So thanks for watching this Axeman video tutorial on preferences. 